If you clicked on this video, you're probably just like me. You're an audiophile, you're a bass head, and you simply enjoy music to sound amazing in your ride. And if that's you, you may want to stick around because I'm going to show you how I took my Bronco sound system to the next level. What up, what it is, what's happening YouTube? It's your boy Certified and I'm back with another banger for you guys. Y'all already know what's up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel yet, what I always tell you guys, go and smash that subscribe button. You know why? Because it don't cost me none. Don't cost you none. Just click that red button for me. And if this is your first time tuning in to this channel, welcome to Certified Official. So it's no secret that the sound system in the Bronco is lacking output, it's lacking sound quality, and it doesn't matter if you have the upgraded B&O system, and especially for those with the bass audio system. Now don't get me wrong, the B&O system does add a little more volume in my opinion, but the sound quality can definitely be improved. So there are a ton of videos on YouTube right now where people have actually improved their sound quality by doing a simple speaker upgrade, changing out the dash speakers, door speakers, and some have actually done a software hack through Forescan to get a little more clarity and volume out of those rear pods. Though those simple upgrades make a big difference and they're extremely cost effective, for people like me, and probably you watching right now, it's still not going to cut it. So I'm going to show you how I did a complete sound system overhaul, including two amps and a digital sound processor. But before we get into this thing, I do want to give a quick disclaimer. I'm not going to bore you guys with how to remove all the trim panels to gain access to everything needed in order to get this job done. There are plenty of videos on YouTube right now that go into detail on how to remove those access panels. That being said, I will be showing you guys how I wired everything up for the equipment that I chose to use. And I will also give you an overview of everything that I'm getting installed today. So let's get into it. So before we get this install going, I just wanted to show you guys everything that I'm putting in the Bronco today. Uh, be mindful all the wiring, adapters, harnesses, anything that you would need to install a system like this. I will have listed in the video description below, including the parts that you see in front of me um, in case you guys want to do this yourself. So uh, for those that have been following me on my channel for a while, some of this stuff may look familiar and that's because it is. Uh, some of the things that I had in my charger I took out before I traded it in for the Bronco. So let's get started. So for starters, this right here is the Dynamat. That is the laser pre-cut Dynamat system for the cargo area. Um, it covers the floor, some of the sides and everything. So I just wanted to add that to help with some of the vibrations that this uh, will create for my main channels i will be amplifying those with the gel audio hd 600 slash 4 my sub amp is a hd 750 slash 1 and my sub itself is a 12 inch gel audio um, w7 uh, for my dsp i have an audison bit 10 d then obviously a sub remote for you know sub levels and uh, for my front channels, I have, I'm have i going with the component set from Hertz, the Hertz Centros. This is the flat profile, um, which you, you can identify by the F. The regular versions of those do not have the F, but I wanted the flat profile because the front speakers in the kick panels, there's not a lot of room behind there, and I didn't want to get custom brackets made in order to fit those or, or space them out properly. Um, I ordered everything through Crutchfield, so it came with all the installation gear. So the bracket that this came with will fit this speaker, all right? So you won't need any custom brackets if you decide to go with this series. For my rear speakers, the rear pods, I'm going with a six and a half inch reference series from Infinity, um, and those will be going in the SSV work pods. Uh, I ordered these unloaded. Um, you do have the option to order these loaded if you'd like. They look just like this in the picture, but if you want to get your own speakers, um, they come unloaded. Then I also have a custom panel from MTI Acoustics. Um, they make this uh, amp mount mounting bracket or equipment mounting bracket that goes in place where the B&O sub was, um, but due to the fact of the equipment that I have and the size amps that I have, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to mount those on there, but even if I were to be able to mount them, I'm not going to be mounting the amps on this bracket. I will be putting my uh, crossovers and my distribution block on there because I have plans for future 
things in the Bronco in order to make the sound system look even better. But yeah, MTI Acoustics does make those if you guys are interested. For the front speakers, now the B&O system does come with two corner speakers and a center speaker. So because this component set is going up front in the kick panel, the tweeters for this component set is going to go on the corners of the dash and the center speaker I'm going to replace with another infinity reference uh, form 1 16th speaker right here and then I also have another set of tweeters that I'm going to be adding to this system that are actually going to get wired into the factory wiring where the pods were so I know you may be asking why are you doing that I will explain all that stuff further on in the video so stick around because I I have a reason why I'm doing that because technically I could use the existing wiring for the pods for these because that's what's replacing these but um I'm not trying to do that because I'm not trying to lose my rear chimes for the uh, backup sensors. So again, I'll explain all that in further on in the video, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of everything that's gonna get installed. So let's go. So the first thing that I did was essentially gut the vehicle. I removed all of the trim pieces to get access to all of the speakers in the vehicle. Uh, the B&O system has three speakers in the dash one on each corner and one in the center so i removed all of those trim panels um, i removed the trim panel for the kick panel speakers i removed the trim panels on the door seals front and rear uh, i removed the passenger seat because i'm planning on mounting my dsp underneath the passenger seat uh, i also removed the passenger side trim piece that's covering up the seat belt on the driver's side, because I did not remove the seat, I just loosened it up just so I had access enough behind it to be able to run my power wire underneath it. And of course, I removed all of the trim panels in the cargo area because I'll be laying down my dynamat there, as well as the B&O sub because that won't be utilized anymore, but I also needed to remove it because the dynamat also has a piece that goes behind the sub area in that location. So this is what the cargo area looks like after you've removed all the panels. I highly suggest vacuuming or sweeping out any loose debris before you start laying down your dynamat. So this is the pre-cut dynamat kit for the Bronco. Um, it has all sizes exactly how you need it. There's no modifications that you need to do. All you need to do is stick it down and roll it on. So as I started installing the actual dynamat, I noticed that it's best to not rip off the entire backing paper all at once because the dynamat itself is extremely sticky. So what I recommend is ripping off or taking off some of the backing paper on half the dynamat as you place exactly where you want to put it. Make sure that any of your mounting holes for your uh, cargo tray or any of your drain holes aren't covered and then start peeling off the rest as you lay it down with your hand. Once the entire backing paper is removed, then you're good to go with rolling everything down. You don't wanna make the mistake of ripping the entire backing paper off and then thinking that you're gonna have everything aligned in one shot. If you're lucky, good on you, but if you're not, you're gonna have a hard time trying to get that dynamat back up in order to position it properly. And this is what it looks like once all the dynamat is installed. All of the pieces for the dynamat are pretty self-explanatory, um, even though they're not labeled, but it's easy to figure out where everything goes. So here's a quick clip of everything that I've removed. The dash speakers are out. I removed the center trim panel that holds the shift knob because that's where I'll be mounting my base knob for the amp. The passenger seat is out. Passenger door seals are out. The passenger kick panel speakers are removed. Um, I also removed that uh, seat belt trim piece, as you can see right there, that I mentioned earlier. Um, it gives, there's plenty of room behind there if you're trying to run wires. I also removed the back seat passenger trim piece that's on the bottom by the door seal. And on the back, you can see the cargo pieces. Everything is accessible. Those top pieces that you guys seeing right there that are missing, that's actually where I'm going to be mounting those tweeters. So you'll see that shortly. Right now you see the rear pods have been removed. And um, here's a driver's side view of everything that I removed on the driver's side. 
Um, everything was pretty simple, y'all. Um, just take your time. Plastic, everything has pop clips and stuff, so it may sound noisy. It so may sound like you're breaking something, but you're really not. Everything is literally snapped in. Uh, I found it really easy to remove all of the interior pieces. And here's a quick clip of the full B&O setup, the sub, of course. And one thing I wanted to point out is that the kick panel speakers that you see in right now and the corner dash speakers, they are definitely different than what you get in the base audio system. A lot of people think they're the same, but they are not. So this part was a little nerve wracking because I was drilling into my actual panel and one little slip up would have ruined them. But I used a step drill bit initially to drill the initial hole. And then I used a Dremel to drill them out just a little bit bigger to where those three quarter inch tweeters fit. And it came out really clean. But those actually got plugged into the existing rear pod wires to where I don't lose my backup sensing chimes. After that, I drilled the hole and actually mounted the knob for my sub amp. Uh, I do feel like I mounted it a little bit too close to that little door right there, but it was just enough room to where I can still open it and plug in my phone charger if needed. Next, I cut off the connectors that came pre-installed on the SSV work pods that would be plug and play directly into your factory wiring. But uh, because those speakers will be amplified, I soldered in speaker wire and I had some dynamat laying around that I also put inside it and then installed the Infinity Reference six and a half inch speakers. These are my mid bass drivers for my Hertz components that I ordered and Crutchfield provided those speaker adapter rings and I had to Dremel out those notches in order to fit it. Same thing with the dash speakers. Um, those will be getting mounted on the corners. Those are part of the Hertz components and I had to drill the holes to be able to mount the tweeters in that location. I then measured around 20 feet of wiring that I soldered into the dash corner and front kick panel speaker wire harness adapters in order to run those wires to my sound processor to get a full range signal. After that, I installed the rear pods as you guys just saw. Um, that was a little bit challenging for me with the hard top on. Uh, you soft top owners may not have that issue, but if you're doing it with the hard top on, make sure you have an angle driver because otherwise you will not have any room to be able to get those top screws on. Uh, as far as the speaker wire, as you see, I ran it across the top and down the side. And then I also installed the rear tweeters. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the tweeters. Next, I installed the center dash speaker. I did solder in a 400 hertz bass blocker because I didn't want any bass frequencies going to that speaker. That speaker will distort at loud volume if you don't, so I do suggest you install one. As far as the panel that goes on top of it, I didn't find too many how-to videos on how to remove or reinstall it. So it's real simple. There's two screws next to the accessory port. You pull those out and then you carefully get a pry tool and remove the clips and pull it towards the windshield. The reinstallation is the same way. I do suggest, however, you take out the USB port on those two clips before you do so and then reinstall it after the fact. After that, I decided to tackle the amp power and ground wires. I ran zero gauge wiring through the engine firewall up the driver's side tray where you see the existing wiring. That tray has plenty of room to be able to run a zero gauge power wire all the way to the back. So I ran that up to the cargo area and across that cross member all the way up to where the BNO sub used to be. And I ended up putting the ATI Acoustics amp rack in place of that. Uh, on that amp rack, I will be mounting a distribution block um, which will be split off into two and those wires will be going back to my amps which will be mounted on the back of the seat and I will show you shortly where I put the grounds. Next, I decided to mount my component tweeters and run my signal wires that I soldered into the dash and kick panel harness adapters. I ran those wires from the driver's side on the back side of the dash underneath the carpet across to where you guys see it right now. Um, you can't see the wire, but I ran it underneath the carpet to my sound processor, that, which will be mounted underneath the passenger seat. And I also ran the speaker wire that will be coming from my aftermarket amp back to my kick panel speakers and my tweeters um, towards the back. I ran my RCA wires from my sound processor underneath the carpet towards the back, which will be remain underneath the carpet all the way up behind the back seat. And as you guys see, that's where all my wires terminated. 
I also wired in the remote wires for the DSP and amps to fuse 35 underneath the dash. Uh, even though this fuse is listed as not used, I did find that there is power going through there when the ignition switch is turned on. And because I had a little bit of dynamat left over, I went ahead and put that behind the kick panel speakers. And to show you guys where I mounted my amp grounds, that was actually my second location because initially where I had it at in the center, I didn't like how that looked so I chose that location instead. And before I reinstall all the panels because we are officially done wiring everything, I just wanted to show you guys how everything looked. All the power and ground wires I ran, speaker wires, RCAs. As you see now, this is where I mounted the distribution block, the crossovers for my front component speakers, and the factory amp slash DSP. Now you may ask, why am I still using the factory amp? Um, that's because my aftermarket DSP requires high level speaker inputs. And in order to get that, I had to retain the factory amp. Um, so it's unfortunate because I am selling those speakers and it's gonna be a hard sell without that amp. But nonetheless, uh, this system worked out for me because I'm reutilizing the same equipment I had in my vehicle previously. Um, but no, it's, it's a really good sound processor. That Audison Bit 10 is awesome. But uh, as you see, the kick panels, mid drivers are installed. And then I also installed the, uh, the amp remote knob uh, in the center console, as you guys can see it right there. Um, and I still have access to my uh, USB ports. And then of course the dash speakers are done as well. Once all the connections inside the vehicle were done and everything was hooked up properly, I went ahead and connected my power wire to the extra terminal on top of the battery. And I also wired in the 150 amp circuit breaker. Uh, I chose the circuit breaker because I don't ever have to worry about replacing fuses on that end if it decides to pop. And it also makes it super easy to remove power if needed with a push of a button. And this is an overview of what everything looks like after I reinstalled all the trim pieces, passenger seat, everything is back in the vehicle. Uh, this was the most tedious process of this install was actually running the wiring for all the equipment that I have because I was very focused on making sure that you don't see anything, that it looks as clean as possible. Uh, of course you see the wiring behind the amps but that's because of the fact that I chose the location of the amps to be on the back seat. Uh, as you see right now on the right side, I do have banana plugs on those wires to go to my sub enclosure. Um, and that makes it super easy for me to disconnect that sub in case I wanted to remove the sub for times when I needed to pick up something big um, that needs to fit in there. Uh, trunk space is reduced, but I can set that sub box sideways uh, to where I have a little bit more trunk space in case I needed it. But again, like I said, I can easily remove that sub if needed. Overall, this install was very tedious but and time consuming, but overall it's easy as long as you take your time. Um, as you see, or just saw, you can see the uh, DSP right there. Uh, it makes it super easy and accessible for me to actually plug in my wiring to my laptop to be able to tune it. And of course, the dash speakers are all in. And even though you just saw that I was able to lay the back seats completely flat, I just wanted to show you guys underneath the back seats that there isn't any wiring showing. Then it was time to tackle the fun stuff. So I initially set the DSP input gains, uh, which I did not show unfortunately. But as you see now, I started setting my amp gains as well. And this is a $40 oscilloscope that I got from Amazon that works out pretty good. After I finished setting the amp gains, I had to go into the Forescan software to disable the active noise cancellation feature. Um, you can find that in the DSP section of the configuration and programming. The first code on the top line, you just have to change that first letter from a D to a C and that disables it. If you do not disable that, uh, because your system and your speakers are now amplified, you will hear a nasty, crazy hum coming out of your speakers and or subwoofer that gets louder with your RPMs. So as your RPMs increase, the hum gets louder. So you have to disable that. And after that, it was time to tackle the final portion of this install, and that's actually tuning the DSP. What I did is I picked 10 high quality recorded songs that are extremely dynamic of the type of music that I like to listen to to be able to dial everything into my liking. So there you have it. 
This is what it takes to take the Bronco sound system to a whole new level. And if you guys are interested in doing the same, I really hope this video finds you all helpful. All in all, this install took me about three days to do, not including tuning. The tuning on top of that in the DSP took me about four to five days. And that's because over time your ears get fatigued and it just doesn't sound the same the next day once you're done. So there's a couple of tweaks that you have to do off and on to kind of get everything dialed in exactly how you like it. So do I recommend somebody who has zero experience in cardio installation to do a job like this themselves? And the answer is yes. Number one, because it saves you a ton of money on labor costs. An installation like this at a cardio shop can easily range starting around $700 and sometimes even higher than that. If anybody charges you lower than that, I would not trust them to do an install like this. But also be mindful if you do attempt to do something like this yourself, there are a lot of tools and little added things that I did not show in this video that you're gonna need, such as connectors, uh, wire trim kits, things of that nature. I couldn't even think of everything that I use right now, but there's a lot of tools and stuff that go into doing an install like this and to make it a lot more simple for you guys to do. The other question may be is, how expensive is it to do this if you don't include the labor? And the answer to that is it all depends on the type of equipment that you choose to use and the brands that you choose to use. And it also depends on the outcome that you want, whether you want an SQ setup, whether you want an SQ and SPL mix, or you're trying to build a strictly SPL build. It can be expensive on all aspects. It doesn't mean that SQs are cheaper than SPLs and so far and so on, but it can get very expensive very fast so at the end of the day it's all in the type of equipment that you want to use the brands that you go with and the type of output overall that you're trying to achieve so if you want a brief example of how much everything costs if you don't include labor just a reminder i did put everything in the video description below of all the equipment that i installed in my bronco today so if you guys have any questions don't hesitate to hit me in the comments below or dm me on instagram but that's going to wrap it up for today, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at certified underscore official. Also, hashtag salute and certified drip on all your pictures and videos to show love and support to the channel. And until next time, YouTube, I hope y'all have a good day.